Hello everybody, my name is Michael Septerman and welcome back to the channel. Thank you everyone for joining me back in another week and today I'm going to be breaking down this scene that I made in Blender uh, for you guys so you guys know exactly how to make it as well. It's a pretty simple scene, it's just consisting of one long hallway uh, and a focal object uh, in the foreground. So yeah, I'm going to be breaking it down and showing you exactly how you could recreate a similar scene uh, back home for yourself. So taking a look at our scene here, you notice that there is one focal object throughout this whole scene and it's this kind of like massive uh, squares here in the middle. So that's what I did in the beginning. So as you can see, this entire scene is like very simple. It's just one long hallway with some greeble on the walls and some extra features like the ivy. So let's take everything away first. So you can just see, um, so you can just see the camera and this thing in the middle, which I called the thing. So the most important part about making a scene like this is kind of figuring out what your focal point is. So if you take a look here, uh, I've decided that this kind of mass uh, of squares is going to be my focal point. So that's exactly what I did. Um, as you can see here, this is basically just a cube that I duplicated a bunch of times and then uh, ran a Boolean modifier through to create this kind of ring shape structure. Uh, and I also added this uh, this bevel modifier to make it kind of more rounded. So if we look at back in the whole scene again like this, uh, we can see that uh, it kind of fits well into the middle of this like super dark scene. And you can kind of tell uh, that it's the focal object that we want to keep our focus on when viewing this uh, piece of work. So the next thing that you guys uh, want to do if you're trying to recreate a scene like this is kind of give your focal object a structure or some sort of uh, thing to house it in. So as you can see here, uh, let's go back into solid view here uh, and let's take away everything else here so we can just see the structure. So the structure is pretty simple. Uh, if we go in here, I, I started off this entire thing by kind of creating this walkway. So if we just uh, take everything else out like here, you can see that this is a super simple walkway that uh, I created, you know, with some simple hard surface modeling. Um, so if, if you can take a look here and it's just uh, a bevel modifier and an array modifier in order to kind of add more squares along the line. Uh, and then from the walkway, I kind of, uh, you can make this in however you want. I just chose to have this kind of like slanted in uh, shape here. But after the walkway, uh, I added these walls, which again is super simple. It's just, it's just a, uh, it's just two uh, really large and stretched out cubes, uh, which I subdivided for, for later, which you'll see why. And then after, after the walls, uh, I just added a plane on the ground just to kind of give the ground something. Uh, to give the walkway something to stand on and then I, I thought that this wasn't going to be enough with the thing in the middle here So I, I wanted to add um, a little more structure to the place uh, So if we go to our camera view here as you can see it's looking kind of plain right now So what I did was I, I decided to add uh, pillars uh, and as you can see again, it's super simple. These pillars are uh, Just a mirror of one another and these pillars are just you know, very simply sculpted using uh, hard surface modeling with a lot of insets and extrusions. So as you can see here, these are just inserted and extruded a few times. Uh, yeah, so then after that, I decided that I wanted something uh, behind uh, this, this object here because it kind of still looks a little empty in the back and that's when I added in uh, the doorway. So this doorway, uh, I took a lot of inspiration from like sci-fi uh, with these like slanted edges and it kind of looks like a portal or some kind of like jet thruster engine, something like that. But yeah, I, I took a lot of inspiration uh, from photos and things and I managed to create uh, this structure over here. So uh, if we go back into here, we can kind of see it's a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more welcoming. We can kind of see a little bit more uh, of the objects uh, kind of like housing uh, and then after that I, I moved on to adding the railing onto the walkway because or else people would fall off the edge and we don't want that so I added the railing here again simply just modeling a cube adding an array and adding a boolean a boolean modifier sorry and then adding an array um, just to cut out kind of like a square so it looks uh, like railings on a walkway. Uh, and then after that is what 
I call Greeble and what most people in the community call Greeble. So Greeble is basically this, which you see where you have a ton of squares uh, projected onto the surface of a another cube. So as you can see, this was, uh, I achieved this kind of look very simply uh, using something known as the discombobulator. So if you go into edit preferences and you go to add-ons and you look up the discombobulator, um, it's a, it's an add-on that's inherent to Blender and it's already there. So all you have to do is click an object, subdivide it a few times, press shift A and add mesh discombobulator. And then you're given these uh, settings to play around with and you just press okay. Uh, in order to add more Greeble, something like that. Uh, and you can mess around with the settings, see what you like, but this is the one that I ended up with. Although you can't really see it in the final scene, I still think it adds a little bit of structure and a little bit more interesting things to the walls around the object in order to make the scene feel more alive. If you need a full tutorial on how to use the discombobulator and other useful add-ons, please comment it down below and I could create a video for you uh, next week. So right after the structure is done, you kind of want to decide the lighting of the entire situation. So let's let's go into uh, rendered view here. And as you can see, I, I made the world completely dark with uh, no input at all onto the surface. So um, that's where we introduce our lighting system here. So as you can see, our lighting is super, super simple. So we have two. So the first lighting is this uh, area light, I believe. Yeah, an area light set to a really high power. And uh, the color is some bluish color, which I really, really like. And as you can see here, uh, it looks something like this. And then we have a point light in the center of our object just to kind of bring it a little more to life. Now, uh, I'm sure you noticed that this looks horrible right now with a high intensity light uh, in the background illuminating the whole scene and everything just has this bluish tint over it. And that's because the lighting is slightly too harsh. So one way I like to break up the lighting a little is by using uh, fog. So um, for those of you who don't know how to create volumetric fog, you can always watch my video. I'll link it in the top right corner here and teaches you exactly how to use um, volumetrics in Blender. So as you can see here, I've, I've added the volume scatter node to the material outputs volume. And as you can see, the fog kind of softens the light, its impact uh, onto the objects in the scene, and it makes the light a lot softer uh, in, in order to create this kind of like ghostly, uh, mysterious ambience. So as you can see here, this is no fog, and this is with fog. As you can see, it's a lot better um, you know, with the fog involved and, you know, to make sure that uh, everything looks a lot better than without the fog. And now on to kind of like almost the final piece uh, of this entire uh, render is kind of like the extras. So uh, as you notice here, uh, I have some ivy running along the bottom of the scene here going around the walkways handles. And we've got some cables on the top here. Let me just go into solid view so you can see exactly what's going on. So as you can see, the ivy actually runs all the way to the back of the walkway. And there's a little bit more ivy on the front that runs all the way to the doorway up in front there, as you can see. Uh, so these are, are really simple uh, what is known as generators. So uh, generators are essentially, uh, you know, pre preset and pre-made geo uh, geometry nodes, which you can import into your Blender scenes uh, and then just kind of like draw them out in order to uh, really make your scene look more realistic. Uh, so let's start with the cables because it's the easier of the two. So this is from an add-on known as Geo Cables. So if you press N here and you can see to my right, there's A tools. And then it says Geo Cables here, create or edit cables, object to cables, uh, etc., etc. So I can show you how it works here. So if I just create or edit cables, I can just click, 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 click. And it creates these, uh, uh, these cables that are completely procedural in nature. Um, yeah, and, and just like that, you can create some simple cables. Uh, I'll link down geo cables down in the description so you guys can download it for yourself. It's completely free. Uh, and these IVs are actually created by uh, the same person who made the geo cables. Uh, so these are known as generators. And basically, uh, if you can see my asset library here, uh, there's a bunch of different generators that you can use. Uh, and I use the one known as Ivy here in the top right corner. So basically what this does is you can just right click and open the blend file and then you can copy paste the Ivy into your own 
uh, blend file. As you can see, there's a lot more generators here. You have the bridge, cables, chains, etc., etc. But I, I chose to kind of go with an overgrown look for my scene anyway. So uh, again, like I'll link down these generators in the description below. They're CC0 and completely free to use. You don't have to pay any kind of money in order to download them. And yeah, I, I think it makes the scene um, look way more realistic because a place like this should be overgrown with unattended cables and IV and other forms of greenery uh, as well. So yeah, if again, if you want a video on how to use these generators, I'd be happy to do so for you. Just, uh, you know, comment down in the, sec uh, in the comment section down below and I'll get a video out for you. So once you kind of modeled everything and put them all together uh, in a composition that you kind of enjoy and you like to look at and you think looks good, uh, it's time to texture all of these items. So uh, as you can see here, it's again, super simple to texture everything, starting with uh, the walkway. So the walkway is just, uh, you know, a metal texture slapped on with a little bit of rust on it. If I kind of get out of the camera here and kind of zoom in, you can see some orange rust uh, on the edges here. And you can see like the uh, grayish metal and silverish metal. Uh, so to achieve this look is super simple. You just need a PBR texture. Uh, and if you don't know what a PBR texture is, I have a video on my channel explaining exactly how to use it in your uh, scenes and blenders. So I'll link it in the top right here. But if you look to the left here, it's super simple. You just, uh, you know, take all these PNGs and run it into the principled BSDF, uh, like the metallic value, the roughness value, etc. Uh, and, you know, and you will achieve a look like this. So this is equal throughout all of the array here. Uh, and I've actually also added this texture to the doorway at the back, although you can't really see it in the final render, uh, as well as the uh, railings on the walkway. So the next thing is going to be the walls. The walls also use a PBR texture, but they're kind of like a cliff, like a rock on a cliff texture. Uh, you can't really see it in the final render here. So if I go into viewport shading, you can kind of see that this is a some kind of rock texture. Uh, again, you can't really see it in the final render, but I, I like to I like to texture everything anyway, just to make sure it looks good. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the rough parts of the wall on the left and right, although you can't really tell in any way that's not the focus. For the pillars, I, I actually left them untextured because I, I think that it looks good just as white. Um, kind of adds to the minimalism of the whole structure anyway. And again, they're not really, it's not really consequential to how they're textured because again, they're just objects on the side. And uh, finally, for the object in the middle, this is really simply textured as well. Uh, as you can see, I just had one principled BSDF. I turned up the metallic value and then lowered the roughness value all the way. I, I think it looks good like this. It's kind of like halfway between metal and glass and the light, the point light in the middle really kind of emphasizes that. So uh, I, I just left it at that without any fancy editing. And I, and I think it looks pretty good. As for the cables and the IV, those are already pre-textured from... Uh, from the creator, so you don't really have to touch it. Uh, for the cables, however, if you go into these settings here, uh, you can change the cable material here. Uh, although, I, again, like I said, I just left it at cables material one, which is the preset default anyway. So after you texture that, your scene should look a little bit more like mine. And, uh, you know, it should uh, have uh, all the necessary features of what a realistic render should look like. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed our render. I'm super happy with this render as how it came out from Blender. Uh, and I think it looks, you know, it looks really good. But for those of you who are not yet satisfied like I was, uh, you can actually take this image and run it through Photoshop. So I'll actually throw up an image uh, on the screen here of what I did in Photoshop in order to make the render look better. There's a little bit of camera filters, lens dirt, some overlays, etc, etc. But yeah, so I, I decided to run it through Photoshop to make the render look better. But hopefully all of you watching today have learned something from this video and can kind of recreate this similar scene, a uh, similar type of scene on your own uh, at home in Blender. So thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. Uh, for those of you who haven't done it yet, please go down, um, scroll down and click the subscribe button because it really helps my channel out and we've been growing exponentially over the past few weeks. So thank you everybody for that. Uh, and yeah, and for those of you who perhaps don't really want to end uh, the video here, you could always click the video on the screen to learn more about Blender. Thank you everybody. I hope you have a good one. Goodbye.